water is nice and clear. Good morning, I have a little idea if the dogs allow me to go somewhere we haven't gone for a while. Got a little bit of news for you as well. I'm not sure if I broke that news to you already, but today I'm heading to Ireland. So I'm not sure how the next sunrise stroll and chat will be, but I'll try to give some live signals so that you can realize what's going on. I just see the whiskers of a catfish here sticking over the water, but now it's gone under. <laughs> that was interesting just to see two moving whiskers about an inch or two above the water. And there's some catfish down there as well. I'm not sure if you can see them. Yeah, there's one on the surface now. And they have quite long whiskers. All is quiet here on the western front. The dogs must be asleep. Don't wake sleeping, don't awaken sleeping dogs. Oh. I was thinking of doing something. Maybe you realize what it is already. We haven't done for a while. So my grade school in Ireland, where I went to grade school, is celebrating 150th anniversary. So it was suggested to me and requested of me to, if possible, to come for the family visit in conjunction with this celebration. So that's why I'm heading home, God willing, with a stop in a layover in Amsterdam. And today we're on a little different routine of readings because of, this is what I'm doing extra that we didn't do before for a while, because this was dismantled for a long time. Actually, since October, the, after October the 7th, it was dismantled and it was only put out here a few weeks ago. It's always good to get a different perspective on home base, you know. And that's what the readings do as well. The scriptures take us into a different perspective on our home base because they're the reflections, let's say just take it from that point of view, they're reflections from people who lived, in this case, 2,000 years ago. And Philip is, and is honored today and from Bethsaida and he's right across the water here on the other side of the lake from his home was in Bethsaida. And, and James the Lesser, who was Bishop of Jerusalem, and because of that, it's a very special celebration here in the Holy Land, the first Bishop of Jerusalem. So, uh, putting ourselves into the thoughts and reflections of people from other times is good because it helps us to get a little angle and perspective on, on everything. Even I remember visiting, actually even at the dentist, the dentist I went to a few years ago, I need to go again, um, up there in Tiberias, in the higher part of Tiberias, and to see the lake from that angle was so different than seeing it from here. And actually even seeing it out here is different than seeing it from the shore. And we're not far from the shore, but it makes a big difference to step out of our own box and put ourselves in the context of others. You remember that famous uh, Native American proverb to walk in the moccasins of the other for a few miles before making hasty judgments about people, you know? good wisdom of meeting the other. It's the encounter with the other. That's such a blessing to encounter the other friend at the supermarket, at the store, 
en route at a gas station. The great joy of meeting the other. And we're bonded with every other since Adam and Eve. Wouldn't that be wonderful in eternity to meet the very first human beings created with soul, truly human beings. And to meet Abraham. Oh, the dog is out now, so that's good. I got to hear ahead of time. It's just one of the little ones. So to, to meet Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, who knows how God, God's grace might have worked on the Pharaoh, on Pontius Pilate, on Herod the Great, who knows? You know, it's above our pay grade to call damning judgments on all these people. We might be in for some very big surprises. Like, for example, all this sky is so dark right now, but if you look over there, there's a ray of light coming through. A little break in the cloud. And sometimes there's a little break in the cloud of the human being's mind. There's a beautiful psalm today, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. There were lots of birds this morning, in the last 10 or 15 minutes, chirping wildly over my head. There's a lot of life underneath the water here. You can see the, there's a fish or something going there, creating those circles. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. So like right down here in the water, we see effect of the sunlight. And that's a proclamation from the sun itself that it's there, you know. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. And the ferment reveals his majestic works. And just the whole science of clouds is amazing and, and their purpose, because they're carrying, they're the irrigation system of the planet. They're carrying the water through the evaporation from the oceans across the skies and distributing it and dropping it on the fields and the mountains and the valleys of the whole planet. It's really amazing. And then the whole electric impact of the clouds and the humidity and the pressure systems and the temperatures and we get lightning storms, thunder and lightning and rainbows and not to mention nighttime just go way above the clouds and the closest neighbor is our moon and then our sun is the core of a small little solar system and then we have the big ones the really big ones the ones maybe that haven't even been discovered yet the heavens proclaim the glories of god behind every great gift there's a giver you know thrilled by science and it answers lots of questions and discovers lots of new questions that need to be answered but I'm also thrilled about the gift of faith of knowing that there is a creator and that the heavens proclaim the glory of God that I can discover a lot about the giver looking at the gift They just got the right gift for me. And they parceled it so beautifully. You can tell so much about the giver from the gift. No pressure. <laughs> and this image, this psalm is always used in conjunction with the apostles because they proclaimed the glory of the resurrection. And that's our first reading today, which is a new creation. So just as the heavens proclaim the original creation, so the apostles, human beings, human voices, a fisherman from here, a fellow from Nazareth, James the Lesser probably, and Cana, Nathaniel, Bartholomew, 
tax collector. No, no, everybody is called to be, uh, it's amazing the variety of backgrounds called to proclaim the new creation, new hope in the midst of oppressive darkness of Roman legions pounding their drums of war. And in the midst of all that world of challenges and difficulties and new babies and illnesses and burials, marriages, there's a new voice that there's defeat of death. What a message to send out across the empires of the world. And that sin can be forgiven and there's mercy abounding. And if you took away the sun, a lot of our solar system would totally collapse. And if you took away the apostles, the foundation of the message would be gone. But that's why we celebrate them. And they were normal people like us, chosen to represent a great history of 12 tribes to show that continuity. God builds on our past, healing our wounds and transforming us for glory. Nothing is wasted. Everything is in a certain sense recycled in that way into glory. That's the ultimate recycling of garbage, you know? That the garbage in our lives the Lord can transform it and recycle it. It's amazing what can be done with garbage. Artwork. It's amazing artwork done with garbage. Shows the way to the Father. You know, I found three different levels of, of um, proclamation. So if you look at the works of creation, we have the proclamation of the Creator, the one who gave us the gifts of creation. And if you listen to the apostles, you have the proclamation of the resurrection and redemption. And then Philip asks a question. Sometimes people think, you know, we laugh at other people's questions, but most every question has has a thread that if you pull a little bit there, you get to the core of a lot of things. And he says, show us the way to the Father. Let us see the Father. Let us see the Father. As that was Thomas's question. And then uh, Philip, show us the Father. Just like Moses, show us the Father. And wouldn't we like to see the sun behind the rays coming out there? Show us the Father. And that's an incredible statement after the works revealing the Creator, after the, these fishermen and tradespeople from around here revealing redemption, that Jesus' face is the face of the Father. The love that's expressed, the mercy that was communicated. God knows much better, he's fooling you. That Genesis 3, volcano of sulfuric poison that hit the consciences of the first human beings. It's reversed completely. God loves you, the father of the prodigal son, giving his only son so that we would have life in abundance, fatherhood, giving life, nurturing life, sustaining life. What a revelation. What a revelation. You guys want to do a sprint with me on this platform right out straight there? We do a sprint. So I'm going to do a sprint to the finish here right now. God bless you. See you later. Who knows where the next uh, where the next um, sunrise will be?
God bless you. Pray for us, pray for Ireland.